Hey, GH peeps. Welcome back to my channel as we do the General and Re General Hospital Recap for October the 2nd. How are y'all doing today? I pray this, you know, this vid finds y'all all well and good and at peace. So, as y'all know, we're not going to have soaps for the next two days because of baseball. And as y'all also know, this happens. So, I know it's an anxiety patch for a lot of people. And they're like, man, this is stupid. Why can't they play this at some other time? But it is what it is. So, you know, what, what do we do during that time? Well, me, I'm going to keep watching old school GH because I'm absolutely in love right now with the writing. And maybe you can check that out too. The uh, 2000s, I'm going to say 298 and 2005. It was fire. You know, it was fire. So you could do that. You could pray. You could do some seasonal things. You know, do whatever makes you, gives you peace so you're not upset. Because we spend too much energy being upset in a world that's already making it hard. Let's just try to find some happiness, you know. Let me get two days to, you know, to figure that out. But going forward, let's talk about it. Sunny and Anna. Hmm. I kind of like that. I don't even know what you call it. So it's Sun Anna. What is it? What would that, what would that be? But these two have been like, oh, excuse me. These two have been like opening and closing doors for as long as I can remember Anna walking her beautiful self onto the screen at General Hospital. I don't even know if she was, I think she was on there first. I can't remember who was on there first. But um, they've always been enemies slash frenemies slash frenemies, sometimes enemies. Now they're frenemies. Now they're friends. And she's trusting in Sonny more, leaning on him because, of course, she can't lean on her man. And for that, we you know we're not gonna talk about that right now. But yeah, she can't lean on her man, so she's leaning on Sonny, and, and she's thanking Sonny for having her back through all this. And Sonny's like, you know, you know, it's all good. You know, I got you. You know what I'm saying? And you know, you're not the only one that I got my eye. Oh, um, <clears throat> we know what he's talking about. Everybody know what he's talking about. But anyway. Did we flash to Gladys? We flashed to Gladys still packing her bags. Yes, I had to take a breath. Yes, I had to take a breath because Gladys is just, who Jesus. Yeah, so um, she's still packing her bags. And what happens? She sits there, sees that. She keeps packing. Then it, still no answer. She ain't answering. She's too busy packing and jamming stuff into her bag, right? Then we hear a jingling of keys. We hear locksmith stuff going, ch -ch -ch, door ringing. And the next thing we know, Sam comes through the door. I'm happy with Sam. You know what I'm saying? Sam has always been about her stuff. Sam has been about her ish, and Sam came about her ish. Yeah, she came on crazy, but man, I mean, she didn't wasn't crazy, but she came through, through came on with caused pain and went through a lot of pain. But Sam is, I got gotta have a lot of respect for Sam. But anyway, going forward. Sam is like, oh, where are you going? What's going on? What you doing? Gotta get down there and help my girl Sasha. What, what you doing? I'm well, glad it starts going on her little tirade. It was so much just, you know. And then we flash to Lauren and Doc Kevin. And I don't know. I'm glad Laura's got scenes. I love her and, and Kevin. I do that, you know. Laura's been through a lot. And to see one of our senior um, GHers on there is a blessing for real. We got, we're losing so many of them. So um, she's on there, and Karen Kevin having heart to heart about her, her and Nick, this Nicholas thing with her. I just, you know, Lord, let that boy grow up and let him figure things out, and you go home and you take care of your family. Spencer and, and then definitely Esme and all the rest of them need you. So you know what I'm saying. But anyway, so they're going back, and he's telling her, you know, maybe he don't want a redemption. Maybe he don't want all this. Maybe you just need to leave him alone. Lord's having a hard time with that. You know, because she has not always been a present parent, so she's trying to make the best of it now. She already don't. She already don't got Luke. I mean, sorry, not Luke. She already don't got Lulu and and um and Lucky. So you know, Nicholas is all she has right now. So you know, but she needs to go home. She just needs to go home. And then creepy Montague, creepy creeper, creepiest in the world, Montague. I'm not even gonna call him a doctor. I'm just gonna call him Montague or Montague or whatever his name is. He's signing himself off with Sasha stuff. Like you ever did anything for that girl, you reprehensible piece of, he's a pig, he's a pig, and I can't wait to not see him on the show anymore. Ugh. Right, you know, and then that inept nurse, yeah, Dr. Manigan, because you were so great. Y'all see a villain in her later on? Somebody's kid coming back and being a villain? I don't know, what's about that. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, she got villain tendencies, you know? 
I don't know. She just got that look about her. I don't know. And can we stop making our our women the villain, you know, our general characters, and have somebody come on the outside like we did with, you know, like, uh, what's her name? Uh, Michael's first one. What's his name? Nina's daughter. Nell. You know, Nell came in on, on it and left on it. I like that. Don't make... Like Portia and Nina, I don't stop making the characters the villains. I mean, yeah, the women with problems, but they don't have to be so villainy. You know what I'm saying? Let's bring in somebody from the outside, like you know, new blonde chick. Just saying, just throwing it out there. She looked a little sketchy, a little sketch sketch. She already no, now she gullible. Sam tells Gladys to call the police. Well, no, I'm not gonna take that back. Gladys says she's gonna call the police, and Sam says, "Tell her, tell, go call, call the police." Please, I'm going to sit here and wait for you to call the police. I miss OG Slam. Sam, because Sam would have been slapping the crap out of her. Sam was a boxer back in the day. But anyway, Sam said, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead and call the police. And the glass flies back. Oh, well, Dante, man. Oh, my gosh. Sam's like, just do what you got to do. But while you're doing it, you need to tell the truth about what's going on with Sasha so she, so she can get out of Fern Cliff. Busting, you know, put basically busting Gladys back out. Gladys is deflecting and deflecting. Gladys is the queen of deflectors. She's not a good deflector, but she's the queen of deflector. A lot of other characters got that bad too, but anyway. So then, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then we flash back to Dr. Kev telling, you know, Laura, you know, hey, I think you really just need to let Nick go. And Laura's like, no, I think we should go to London. What, Laura? What? Go home, Laura, go home. Go home, Laura. What are you doing? Anyway, anyway, anyway. We flashed to Anna now having lunch with Jordan. And by the way, Jordan was looking fly. I mean, this woman is fly. Why are you single? Why are they, why they got Jordan single? I mean, you know, I don't want her back with Curtis because Curtis ain't right in the head. He just, he... We're not going to talk about Curtis. But no, but this is fine. Jordan, some happiness, y'all. She's just looking all beautiful for no reason and stuff. But her and her homegirl, Anna, because I see they coming, you know, they becoming, they becoming closer and closer. They're talking about what's the thing with Valentine, you know what I'm saying? And Jordan's like, you know, bringing out little points, and Anna's bouncing points right back, or, back at her. And I think this is going to cause Anna to dig deeper, and I'm glad to see that because this story is a non-story. Valentine should be honest with Anna in the first place. It's a kid, man. It's a kid. It's your kid, dude. But anyway. Valentine flashes down. We flash to Valentine talking to Martin. And I'm sorry, Valentine a Mitch. If y'all don't know what a Mitch is, you take the B off of it, off the other word, and you add the M. I'm trying to keep the PG-13. But he a Mitch. And he a Mitch because why don't you man up and take care of your daughter? Why don't you address your daughter? Why don't you, instead of running to Martin, asking him to defend her for an arson that she may not have even done? And while we're wasting time looking at Charlotte... We could have a real cycle that's actually stalking Anna like her crazy sister that we don't know if she's dead or not. I mean, come on. Talk to your baby. I am a mom, dude. And if I see that my kid is doing something, I don't care what age they is. I'm not, I'm not going to be accuser. I mean, I can't, you know, that just automatically accusing them. But I'm going to ask questions. I'm going to figure out what's going on in their mind. He's going to everybody but her. And then when he talks to her, he just gets this weird look like, Dude, talk to your kid. And let's, you know what, to wrap that part up, we know Charlotte got them. I already, I already figured that Charlotte got those um, tarot cards from Victor. I don't know why nobody else. I, I'm hoping a lot of other people picked up on that. Because tarot cards is a Cassidy thing. Hello, Helena. So as soon... As I seen her with those tarot cards, the first thing I thought is, oh, look what Uncle Victor then sent his grandchild. Her. I knew it right from the beginning. I knew it right from the beginning. And so when I heard his voice reading that letter, I was not shocked. Hello, and shout out to you coming back to read your character. Though no, we love you, Victor. You were crazy, but you were good. <laughs> so anyway, I just love the Cassidines. They're crazy as hell. And Victor, you know you didn't really help your family when you died. I don't know if that's what your plan was, but they they further apart than ever. You got Nicholas here, Spencer there, and everybody everywhere. And ain't nobody living on Spoon Island except for crazy Ava. And she didn't sold it. And I bet you Nick, Nick Nicholas bought it. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Getting off subject. Getting off subject. Getting off subject. So, we you know, he tells Valentine about the fire and how, I mean... Valentine tells Martin about the fire and how he thinks that he wants him to represent his daughter just in case any legal thing is still not taking care of the problem by just actually talking to his kid. Gladys 
we're gonna go to Gladys again because I really think this was just a pump Sunny into this whole entire action scene because this was a waste of 20 minutes rehashing everything that happened with what happened with what's happened I mean because Nina basically told him what she knew I'm pretty sure Sam could have told him what she knew the time for that we had to hear Gladys tell her lies and lies which enraged me even more but not enraged me to the point where I was going to hurl something at my TV but just I'm just tired of it come on let's just do what you gotta do Sonny do what you gotta do I don't want to hear all this going back and forth yeah and then and then and then she um Gladys pulls the, th the victim card with Sam I'm talking about you remember Brando you remember my grandson did you remember them when you were hashing out the mother and, and, and the wife, did you remember them? Did you care about them at all, Gladys? Did you care about the memory of your son? Let's just be real. You never even cared about your son, to be honest with you. I don't like Gladys. I never has. She's always been a, a snake, a snake, a snake, a big old, big old snake. <sighs> but she has to be there. She's, you know, she's doing her job and she's doing it well. She's a dang good actress. So anyway, so Gladys basically tries to kick Sam out the door. And opens the door to Sonny. Sonny, Sonny G. Corinthos. I just threw the G in there because he's a gangster. <laughs> Sonny Corinthos comes swaggering in there. And we fill out the filler story. And why she goes back and forth trying to convince Sonny that, you know, she's a loving mom and mother in law, not the devil that we all know her to be. Then we flash to Laura and Kevin, and Kevin finally is making leeway, and then Laura says, no, I want to go to London, and he's like, what? And then they get the magic call. Valentine, I don't want to be a dad. Can you come and handle Charlotte for me, please? I want to choke this man. So instead of ever dealing with your child right out, you're pandering her off on another person. First it was Nina. Now, now it's her grandmother. Instead of you facing your 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 this issue head on, you, you you're running, whatever. That just irritates me. We flash to Doctor Montague sneaking back into the fern cliff. I'm looking back because I'm trying to figure out who else didn't see that coming. He coming up in there. Him and Sasha get into the bang out. I'm really thinking Sasha's going to kick his butt. Honestly, she could have because, you know, I'm saying Sasha, like, she got, you know, she's been wrecked working out. <laughs> you know, she got that, I just had a baby, I'm going to kick your butt, you know, energy. You know what I'm saying? She was getting one of them at first, and then he pinned her down, tries, then tries to inject her, and that's when somebody kicks in the door. What y'all think about that? That was insane. It was insane. It was pretty good for a Monday. I ain't gonna lie, but it was insane. Let's hurry up and get to the ketchups for Thursday. Hopefully, we'll have it back on Thursday. Sonny has already confronted Gladys. Um, somebody bust in. Now, oh, that's crazy. Dr. Montague is gonna take her hostage. Irritating me some more. They're just giving this man more airtime than he deserves. Can we just put his butt in the gutter and let Sasha go on her vacation and be free? I'm just saying. Anna bust in on Valentine. Oh, so this is where you've been? Oh, honey, this is my new home where you can move in on and, you know, my deranged daughter can continue to harass you and make you go crazy. They're really going to let this happen. Sonny goes to Michael. Now, I, I seen this in the preview. I'm not sure what it's about, but he's talking to him, telling him, you're the only one who can help me in this. So I'm not sure what that's about. But then we have Chase at GH and Tracy don't know that Chase don't know. And she's like, are you here? for your dad so you know of course I don't know what's going to happen but we we can kind of get the point that Trace is going to be want to tell Chase about what's going on with his daddy which I find really sad that nobody in Chase's family could tell him this this man is a man why are we pampering and pimpering these grown people this is a grown man like he ain't gonna be able to handle his dad dying i, I feel like that whole entire story was to give them a story because it was so i mean but that's you know that's general hospital we are it's the land of i'm not gonna tell you the easy secret so we can drag it out for six months <laughs> And, you know, and, and I, I got another point I wanted to add. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm trying to wonder if Nina is the old Carly. You remember Carly when she came back? She came back when she first came in. Not when she first came into the story. She was a little liar. Just lying, lying. So he was like, okay, you're never breaking up, getting back together. I hope this Nina and Sunny thing don't go like this. I mean, you know, of course, Carly grew and she dra got dragged through the mud. She dragged herself, though. I mean, she was her purpose, her own problem. But, yeah. 
But I'm just wondering if that's what they're going to do with uh, Nina and Sonny. I don't. I just don't see. He's Mr. Loyalty. I don't see that happening. But anyway, we'll see. But um, thank you for coming in and hanging out with me for this time frame. I hope you subscribe. I hope you check me out on Thursday. And I pray this message finds you well. Y'all have a wonderful, amazing next two days. And I'll talk to you soon. God bless.